I'm Alpharius. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Brian! I'm Brian and so's my wife! What's going on guys? Welcome back. And in today's video, we are going to be doing the Alpha Legion, espionage, sabotage, assassinations from within their own ranks. You're not going to see this one come in in more than one ways as we talk about the most loyal traitors out there. So to start off my Alpha Legion, I've grabbed myself a box of Assault Marine or uh, Assault Squad. You guys can see the box. I'll let you read it and determine your own way of saying this. And I've also 3D printed myself some Hydra Marines from 3D Cults. So I'll let you guys do the typing on that. I'll leave the link below in the description for where you can uh, find these 3D prints and you know what to type in now. So now I had my legs from my Assault Marine box. I also grabbed the shotgun from a Kill Team box or a Death Watch Kill Team box because I just love the shotgun. I've removed anything that makes it sort of Imperial because these guys, you know, Alpha Legion, they are traitors at heart, but we will get into that later when we discuss the lore. So to be able to glue this all together, we're gonna be putting glue, uh, resin and plastic together. So we're gonna need to use some super glue. Ha, huh. I appear to be out of super glue. Okay, no worries. So we'll go on to having a look at my uh, ne one of my next projects that we're gonna be doing within this build. And that is a 3D printed Marine on horseback. How cool is this? Missing a leg though. So I suppose I need to print two. Now I have two horses. And I need more glue. <laughs> So as I was saying, super glue really is going to be the best way forward when it comes to gluing plastic to resin as we're adding actual Games Workshop models to some 3D printed parts. And it will be the same for our fully resin printed Marine on horseback. So yeah, sacrifices were made, glue is good. So going back to our Space Marine on horseback, we need to put the two horses together now because both prints were a fail in their own respective ways and we're just gonna use the leg from one of them so that we have less sculpting with Milliput to do as yeah, the sculpting's already done there with the printing and we can just bulk out and make it look like it should be there with this Milliput. So the Alpha Legion, they were the 20th Legion formed giving them obviously the denomination of the 20th Legion or as they were originally known, the Ghost Legion, later to be known as Alpha Legion because they weren't really given a specific name, but they were given a denomination of Alpha. So they took it on as their Legion's symbol. Also, they can be sort of, you can tell them apart from other Legions, kind of, <laughs> I suppose when they're not in sneaky peeky mode um, by the symbolism of the Hydra which is obviously ancient Greek mythology. If you remove the head, another two grow back. Really bringing in to the whole, I am Alpharius, we are one. Now, the Alpha Legion has two Primarchs, which makes them really quite unique. You have Alpharius and Omegon. Now, Alpharius was left behind when all when the ruinous powers flung all the Primarchs across the stars. And But apart from Omegon, he was thrown and taken away, whereas Alpharius remained. And he was trained by Malkador. He grew up with the Emperor and, you know, during his teenage rebellious years, as we all do, he did try to uh, um, assassinate the emperor, um, which did prompt the custodians and uh, the custode Valdor to then uh, create the blood games so they could pre better protect the emperor. Um, but this could be a real sort of foreshadowing for what is to come later with Alpharius acting in an aggressive manner towards the Imperium, but just to show them a weakness and a way that somebody could have assassinated the Emperor if 
in the same way that Alfarius got himself into a sniper position to take him out. If it hadn't been brought forward, then the blood games would never have been created and other ways of testing the custodian's defenses might never have arisen. So an aggressive manner which prompted a reaction from the Imperium, that's a good thing in the long run, not a bad thing to have happened. Now, of course, me saying that they are the most loyal traitors out there is, of course, during the Horus Heresy, they did fall to chaos. Alpharius was shown by a group of aliens called the Cabal two outcomes of the heresy and with that we believe that is why Alpharius decided to choose uh, Horus and the ruinous powers over the Imperium but in a operative way. In order to keep the Imperium safe he has lodged himself well and truly into the traitors and we know this because when the other traitor legions after the after the fall of Horus and the end of the heresy, they went into the Eye of Terror, whereas the Alpha Legion did not. Now this could have been for multiple different reasons, but they were broken up into separate war bands, and they then brought into practice the teachings of the Cult of the Hydra, which is obviously very sneaky peeky, CIA, MI6, um, yeah, they're, they're teaching them how they can be basically subterfuge and sabotage and bring someone down from the inside. And there are other occasions where the Alpha Legion has turned up in the capacity of traitors, but actually they have done more good for the Imperium by raising awareness because Space Marines won't be sent to engage on a planet for no reason. If it's just, oh, well, there's a couple of, it's just a civil war, we'll leave them to it. The Imperium doesn't care. In the grand scheme of things, they don't care. They'll see what happens later. They might just exterminate it anyway. But there have been occasions where actually the ruinous powers have been really bringing themselves into play and it has been traitors and against the Imperium and the, the actually the outcome of that battle was much more decisive than the Imperium knows. So Alpha Legion will go and fight alongside the traitors in order to draw the attention of a Space Marine Legion to be brought into the battle. And this is what happened and how the siege of Varax was brought to an end because the Alpha Legion involved themselves in something they shouldn't really have been involving themselves in, but they saw that the Loyalists weren't really going to get any help. So to get reinforcements and to save those Imperial souls, Alpha Legion arrived. Now, I hope you've got a pen and paper or a good grasp on reality before I go too far into this next bit. So the reason, again, why we're still unsure whether they truly are loyal or traitors is because when Alpharius and Omegon first realized that they were brothers, and not only brothers, but identical twins, Alpharius ordered Omegon to go and introduce himself to Horus. So then they, as their sort of announcement to the whole world and all the other Primarchs that there is a 20th Legion and this is who we are. Omegon did so, but he did it under the name of Alpharius. And instead of introducing himself, usually he attacked Horus. Now, if at this point, Alpharius had now decided to take on the name Omegon, and Omegon had now taken on the name Alpharius, and they effectively switched places, then that means that it was actually Omegon who died at the hands of Rogal Dawn on Pluto. Meaning <laughs> that if that is the case, that actually it is Alfer the original Alpharius that is still alive, and therefore has the reasoning to still be loyal now if at any point they had swapped back that means that it was omegon that that means that it was was alpharius that died at the hands of rogal dawn and they might not they might just be appearing slightly loyal and maybe he's not as intelligent as a primarch should be because he's doing more more to sort of hurt and hinder his cause than he is to sort of progress it even though we don't really know what it is the Alpha Legion really wants or what their objectives truly are. 
But what we do know is that after this whole switching, swapping, and changing their name shenanigans, that after Rogal Dawn had killed one of the Alpha Legion Primarchs, the remaining Primarch withdrew the Alpha Legion from the Siege of Terror, meaning that was the little breath gap that was needed for the Siege of Terror to be won by the Loyalists. So at this point, we can now say that whoever is in charge of the Alpha Legion, they have at least taken on the role of a, I'm going to say, subtle loyalist <laughs> don't get me wrong in the 40th millennium or the 41st millennium, whatever what, in, the, in the current setting alpha legion they a lot of the sort of like baseline space marines and troops they do believe that they are traitors they have um mutations and they are chaotic it just may be that there is a core unit within the central hierarchy of the alpha legion that may be a driving force turning and shaping and molding them into this loyalist faction from afar at least now with this all being said and going back to what i mentioned about the two primarchs being given an ultimatum by a xenos or alien race the cabal those options are really what i believe gives us some solid evidence that the alpha legion are playing both sides of the field now option one that they were given was stay loyal stay with the loyalists win an outright undisputable victory against chaos and then the imperium will stagnate in 10,000 years and then complete die there will be a long slow death of humanity and the other one is join chaos have again a outright victory against humanity and that will then starve that will then starve chaos of the souls and everything that they require so it would defeat both forces it would wipe out humanity and eventually wipe out chaos giving the galaxy the ability to sort of live in harmony and peace for the other xenos races the fact that it was an imperial victory even though the alpha legion joined chaos or so it seems goes to show that they carved their own path there was a third option not being told and this seems to have been the path that they've chosen to play both sides yes the imperium has gone into a stagnation on their victory but it was a victory without the alpha legion and this is why i really do believe that we now have the course of events running through the warhammer universe as it is today so they played such a key and vital role that not many of us really knew about i mean i didn't really know about that until i started looking into the alpha legion i didn't really think about that so i started looking into the alpha legion and it's quite interesting to me just how those little things of massive significance to this game and the world and the law that we all love and appreciate there is just such a small minute choice has twisted it to become this totally different beast that not many people really think about or know about <laughs> And you really have to give it to the Black Ru Black Library writers such as Dan Abbott for creating these tales and this universe that we have our little games and we build our dioramas and create our creativeness in and use our artistic skills for. And the way that I see this diorama that I've built is that we've got very, very old school messenger on horseback and he's trying to get a message, maybe like in 1970 where you've got the two Tommies trying to get a message to the Devonshires not to attack. Maybe this Ultramarine has a message to attack and the Alpha Legion, like one of the commanders knows that if they do, they will be defeated. So they need to stop the attack and stop the message. So a small band has been sent to eradicate the message from ever getting there. And that's kind of what I based this on. The idea that the Alpha Legion are going to kill this ultramarine lieutenant in cold blood and not really care. But the Alpha Legion leaders who have sent them, they do care because they know that they have potentially just saved a lot more space marines from being sent to their doom, maybe keeping them from an ambush, keeping them safe for a victory later. 
Well then, guys, thank you for joining me once again on another miniature adventure. I really hope you've enjoyed the build, the uh, little sort of skim and look at the lore of the Alpha Legion. And with that, I really do hope to see you in the next one. If you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment and share to friends. And I will see you in the next one. And remember, I am Alpharius. I'm only joking. I'm not really Brian. No, I'm not Brian. I was out in the coat. I'm only pulling your leg.